Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? I am doing amazing. Thank you. I want you to introduce yourself briefly to the listeners and the watchers. Um, my name is Anna Silva. I am a boudoir photographer with Chantel Metanota Boudoir. Um, I empower women through boudoir photography, help them gain their confidence, uh, you know, heal a feminine, you know, heal their femininity, bring it back, or help them transform into, you know, just a more confident person. Um, it's very transformational. Yes. So I messed the name up over and over and over. Yeah. Say the name of the photography again. Chantel Metanote Boudoir. Boudoir. Okay. Yes. How did you first come about being a boudoir photographer? Um, I actually started, oh, I can't even remember. I want to say it was like four, three or four years ago. I was in college um, as an architectural engineer or studying to be an architectural engineer. Um, I had some issues with financial aid, and I had to take that next semester off so that I could earn some money to pay that next semester and then continue again. Um, during that time, my fiancé had gotten um, a, a DSLR for me. It was a Nikon 3500, I believe. Um, and I you know, thought to myself, well, I'm going to start doing photography for friends and family. I'm going to earn money that way take care of my college bill, and start over. But uh, the further that I got into the photography, the more I became enveloped in it, and I just kept going. And I thought, you know what? This is something I could, that I could do um, full-time. This is something that I can make a career out of. Um, so you went from studying architectural to being a photographer. Exactly. Like, how did your husband take that? He was supportive. He was very supportive. He just, you know, it just transformed into one thing into another. So, you know, I'm watching YouTube videos, trying to improve my photography, improve the skills. I'm learning more about what boudoir photography is. You know, I'm coming across all these other amazing photographers. I'm learning through other people, all of these other um avenues you know joining facebook groups um watching youtube videos following other boudoir photographers on instagram and i just see how amazing that this is and it's just so much deeper than doing the hair and the makeup and the lingerie like it goes so much deeper than that it's just very has a very sentimental value to it that not a lot of people realize they don't realize how so I like to let the people that's watching and listening know that it's possible. So from hearing just a little bit on how you started, you knew nothing about photography. I knew nothing about photography. Nothing at all. And then you turned around and seen a potential and turned it into a career. Absolutely. Um, the more that I looked into photography, um, the more potential that I saw in it. Um, I think as an architectural engineer, you can learn, earn in between maybe eighty thousand to one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a month or a year. I'm sorry, a year. And with photography, it's it's unlimited. You know, I know photographers making five hundred thousand dollars a year. I know photographers making a thousand dollars. Sorry, a million dollars a year. <laughs> and like, there's there's no limit. There's no limit, and you're you know transforming lives, or you're taking amazing photos. Uh, delivering an amazing experience, and it's, it's really just priceless. In the beginning, when you're self-teaching yourself, because I know for me, I went to YouTube University as well. Yes. What did you think about the triangle, the ISO, the shutter speed, the aperture? That was that was the most confusing part <laughs> at the beginning because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. You know, I didn't know what the ISO was, and you know, always wondering why my, um, you know, why my images were coming out grainy or, you know, so I had it on auto for the, for the longest time. And, you know, I had even shot like uh, a wedding 
in elopements and, you know, family photos at the very beginning, everything was on auto. But I learned that if you do it in manual, you can tr- you can control all of those, you know, all of those to make your images come out the way that you want to. So I started working on perfecting that. I asked you that question because in the beginning, it's tough. You have yes. this ISO and all this extra stuff going on. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. It really when doesn't. You, when you turn that camera into manual, it gets crazy. So I just want to commend you on sticking with it and learning and continuing to build your skills. So the people that's listening and the people that's watching, my only advice is don't give up. Exactly. Exactly. I went from, uh, you know, I had my heart set on being an, an engineer, mainly because my family had pushed me to do that. You know, I was good at math, good at certain things, and they really pushed me to be an engineer. And I felt like I had something to prove. So I went into college just determined to be an engineer. But it really wasn't what I wanted to do. And honestly, I didn't have any idea of what I really wanted to do. But then I found photography and you have just this creative outlet to to explore. You can do so many different things with it. You can get into many different genres, but boudoir photography was what, what captivated me. It, that was it. That was it. after I came across that. That was it. <laughs> so walk me through maybe one to three reasons why a woman would be interested in your style of photography. Oh, this. There are so many, there's so many, so many reasons. Um, maybe I get a lot of women who come in maybe for a bridal boudoir. It's, I think, the most common. I'll have a lot of women come in who are engaged. They're getting married. You know, they want to give a, a beautiful gift to their husband for the wedding day. and They want to get an album. So they'll come in, get their hair, makeup done, have an hour photo session, create those images and put those images into an album and have a nice, you know, beautiful album to give to their husbands. Um, And going into uh, like other reasons, some women will be going through divorce or they'll and maybe like weight loss can be one. Yeah, weight loss. Weight loss. If they're, you know, been a certain weight their entire lives and then they work so hard to lose all of this weight. Um, and it's like an accomplishment for them. So to celebrate themselves and their weight loss, their new body, their new sense of self, they'll come in and do a boudoir session, feel amazing after that. And they just, you know, look at themselves like a whole new person. And even for for other women who don't, who don't have a reason to come in, once they see their images on on paper, once they see it printed, they see it in an album, it just they, they don't even recognize themselves. I love the wow factor. Yes. Like um my wedding clients, they come in and they get their album and they're like amazed. That's what really does it for me. Yes. So I can under, I can understand where you're coming from. But being artistic and being creative is only one side. Exactly. Let's dive into a little bit about the business side. Oh, the business. The business side is um, it can be more. It can be more tedious than other genres of photographer, uh, photography because of, um, because it's so taboo. Right. So you had to find other ways to market. You got to find people who are interested and try to keep it away from the people who are going to be offended by it. So you want to reach women who are open to boudoir photography, who would love to have a session. Um, You got to get your name out there. You have to um, connect with your potential clients beforehand because, you know, they don't know who they're coming into. You know, it could be like an Uncle Bob with a camera. You know, he's in his basement doing these sessions. You don't know what he's doing with the photos. You know, he's not a professional. He's just doing it for the wrong reasons. But um, and that's not that's not even a dig at male photographers. There are thousands of male boudoir photographers that are really killing it in boudoir photography. So it's just you have to do your research, um, make sure you um, you're getting, you know, putting yourself in the right hands. 
So okay. how do you, I know social media is big for everyone now. Yes. What is your biggest social media platform for your business? Right now it's Facebook. Um, when I first got started with boudoir photography, I opened a a private group to put my clients in so I could speak with them. Um, you can go live. You're posting behind the scenes. Um, and just getting them pumped up. You can do contests and giveaways and, you know, just connecting with your clients on a more personal level so that they get to know you and, you know, decide if they want to come come with you for for a boudoir session or if they want to go with somebody else because the personality of the photographer and the personality of the client is going to make all the difference. I tell people all the time, there's so many photographers out here, so many great photographers. Mm -hmm. When a couple comes in, they aren't solely going to book me because of my work. They're interviewing me as a person. Exactly. So when they come in for maybe a consultation or a Skype or however you communicate with your um, potential clients, they're interviewing you. Yes. So I want you guys to know, there's like three cameras going on. So I want you guys to know you are your brand. Exactly. And how you conduct yourself matters. So when they're interviewing you, like walk me through the steps from zero to you booking the client. Okay, so from zero, um, it's usually a word of mouth thing. You know, I can get clients, well, I can get women into my group and I can speak with them. You know, I can speak with them about um, the hair, the makeup, prep, all of that. When they decide that they want to go through with a boudoir session, they either come to me or they're going to go to somebody else. If they come to me, it's because that they know. The step, the process, the steps and the process and everything that goes into it. And they're not figuring it out once they get to somebody's studio. Right. So you have to have all everything laid out for them. Say, you know, these are what you can expect. These are ex expectations. Um, so. Usually I just get like a message from someone. They're asking me, hey, you know, I'd love to do a boudoir session. What days do you have available? By this time, they already know my pricing because I leave it in, out in the open for my group. I don't want them to, you know, feel like... You ambushed them. Yeah, exactly. So um, they're fully prepared. We go over pricing several times. Um, I tell them, you know, give them a lingerie guide. Um, hair and makeup. Expectations, you know, tell them what to look for. They can do like a Pinterest board of, you know, how they would like their hair and makeup to look. Um, let's see, what else? <laughs> <laughs> <I've> just, <laughs> um, so I had the lingerie guide, the prep guide tells them, you know, how to prepare their skin, their face and everything the day of. They come in with, you know, clean face, clean dry hair, so the hairstylist and makeup artist can take care of them. Um, when we go through their session, it's uh, usually 60 to 90 minutes. And I save that entire day just for them because it can be up to a five hour process through hair, makeup, the session. And if we do a same day viewing and ordering, then we do everything that same day. So I don't like to rush anything. Um, it's in a very intimate process. You know, you can't just walk in and walk in with the photographer. Um, you know, strip down into lingerie and then just be completely comfortable. Mm -hmm. So during the hair and makeup, you know, we're getting to know each other. She's getting more relaxed and, you know, she's, I'm just, you know, just speaking with her, just talking to her, you know, reassuring her that this is how it goes and we're just having fun. At this time, at this point, they already know that it's, it's just, they already know what to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, so they're here to have fun. Or they're here to get maybe something else out of, out of their session. Do you have any business background? No, I do not. So you started a business yes. that you knew nothing about. Exactly. And you're flourishing in it. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So there may be 
a lot of girls coming up now behind you. What kind of advice would you give them if they wanted to do what you're doing now? I would tell them just to go for it, to go for it. Don't stop. Keep learning. Do your research. Um, develop your own style. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing. Don't compare yourself to anyone else. Um, just just build that inner confidence in yourself and just and just go for it. Like there's nothing there's nothing impossible in this world. As long as you believe that you can do it. That's that's all you need. That's really all you need. I love it. Your story, how you started, can be very inspiring to the youth and the woman coming behind you. So my words to you, like you said to them, is just, just keep going. Just go for it. I exactly. love it. But we spoke a little bit about the business, how you started. Now let's really talk photography. What's one of the biggest electronic purchases you made so far? Uh, I think it had to be that Sigma 35. When, it, <laughs> when everyone was getting that lens, everyone in the photography groups wanted that lens, and I had to have it too. That was the biggest one. That was that 35 millimeter. And it's been, it's been great so far. <laughs> so what do you shoot? Um, I have a Nikon D710. Okay, Nikon, okay. Yes. We more cool now. Yeah, I love my Nikon. <laughs> um, I started out with the Nikon 5200, and then I wanted to get into wedding, so I upgraded to the 610. Now I have the D50, um, D850, and I love it. Oh, nice. I love it. Nice. I rocked the 610 for like five years. Yeah. Yeah, so this um, 850, whew, I don't think I'm buying another one for a while. Yeah. <laughs> If there's one piece of gear you couldn't live without, what would it be? I think it would be, have to be the 710, <laughs> the D, the Nikon D710. I mean, I love the camera, and I don't see myself moving from any other from any other any other camera. Basically, with the boudoir photography, you don't really need anything else besides the camera and your client. It's it's really that simple. So I am, I'm not a big, um, not the biggest into camera gear, but I do love, do love like the lenses, the actual camera body, even looking into a Sony just to play with, but mm -hmm. we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, cause buying all the gear and you're on YouTube and you're watching, well, me, I just want everything. Yeah. But you can't, you gotta... I and I did that for the longest time. I had a whole wish list of lighting and lenses, and I wanted to try different camera bodies. And I wanted this, um, uh, like the the Alien B, the soft boxes and all mm -hmm. of that. I wanted all of that stuff. I wanted everything. <laughs> and then, you know, I racked up and maybe like a $20,000 bill and I realized, that, like, you know what, I can't have all of this. <laughs> like, I'm just going to go with the basics. It, um. Once you know and understand photography, having all that stuff is a bonus. Because exactly. Because yes. you can do it with what you have. Yes. But I still like all that stuff. Yeah, it's fun to play with. It's always fun to play with. How do you see your photography career growing? I would love to add on beauty portraits for, for my clients who maybe aren't, you know, don't feel brave enough to go through with a boudoir session, but they still want to feel amazing and beautiful and they want the the makeup and the hair and, you know, they just want to feel gorgeous. I would love to add on the beauty portraits for, for that reason. So how do, how do you get there in 2020? In 2020, I think that idea of it is kind of on the back burner right now because I mainly shoot out of Airbnbs or my clients' homes or hotel rooms because I I love to travel. So wherever I'm traveling, I'll rent out a place there. Um, my fiance is in the military, so we don't stay anywhere very long. So it wouldn't make sense for me to open a studio and settle into one place and you know build a clientele and then you know three years later I'm up and gone. 
So I just kind of connect with people on a personal level and say, hey, this is, you know, this is how I work. I don't have a um, a set studio, but I shoot everywhere. You can shoot in so many places, and I think that gives your work a more diverse look because it's not shot all in one, you know, in one bed setting like I did, you know, when I was when I first started. I was renting a um, a studio from another photographer, and I just had one corner, and I was just, you know, I was stuck in that space, just in that one little corner. It was all I could do, and then my work started to look alike. You know, every mm-hmm. client, you know, looked the same, and I was like, we we need to do something else. Let's let's try something else. Okay, so where did you travel from today to get to Albany? I came from Utica, New York today. So this is the drive and the determination that I'm talking about when I say go for it. You travel today just to be on a show. I want to say thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And I want to let you guys know. I want you to let the guys know how can they find you. Um, I'm on Facebook at Chantel Metanote Boudoir. Um and on Instagram at Chantel M. Boudoir. You can email me at Chantel M. Boudoir at gmail.com. Um, my work number, my, what I would call my studio number, is 585-414-0192. All right. I think we covered a lot. Is there anything else you think we should go over? Um, I would say just to let the women know that, you know, that they're worthy of a boudoir session, no matter what they look like, what size clothes they wear, you know, you don't have to be a model, you don't have to be a size zero, you don't have to have a certain look, this is just all about being yourself. And that's the number one thing with boudoir photography that. Um, I think is misunderstood is that you have to be sexy to actually go through with a such se- with a session and it's not like that at all. It's like you just come as you are and we'll take care of the rest. It's, it's all about feeling good, feeling good about yourself, feeling confident, you know, building building that 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 feminine energy in someone who's think you know, who thinks that they've lost it. I love it. Yeah. I want to thank you again. All right. Thank you. All the listeners and all the watchers, make sure you get up, you get out, and you get you some.